Have you ever wondered what flipped teaching actually looks like in the classroom? Are you a student who wants to know what to expect from this teaching style? Maybe you're a teacher who is interested in trying it for themselves. Or perhaps you're a parent who just wants to know how it all works. Whichever category you might fall in, this video will hopefully answer all of your questions about flipped teaching. I'm Jeff Jacobson and today we're going to talk all about flip teaching and more specifically how I actually use it with my students. Flip teaching always starts with a video lesson that students do at home. They open up their computer, try to limit any distractions, uh, use headphones or earbuds to help focus, grab your notebook, a pencil, and you are ready to go. Okay, when my students are actually ready to start watching the video, it's pretty simple. They just uh, log into Schoology, which is my school's learning management system. Uh, you might be using Moodle or your own website, uh, but whichever, for teachers, whichever um, way you use to share your videos is up to you. Uh, Schoology is a really easy one to do. So I make an assignment every time uh, about the new video lesson. So if I look here, the new lesson is uh, about the area of trapezoids, and here's the link. I just post the link. Now, in addition to Schoology, I also use a website called PlayPosit. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. PlayPosit just allows me to, one, add questions to my videos anywhere that I want. Um, I can also, as a teacher, I can also see uh, which students have actually watched the video, which questions they got wrong, which questions they got right. So as a teacher, it just provides me a lot of extra information that is really useful. So this is what it's going to look like for students. Um, if they don't see this, that's probably because they haven't logged in yet. They just need to make sure they log in to play pause it, go back and click the link on Schoology. But this is how it works. They'll watch the video. Welcome to Anywhere Math. I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to talk about how to find the areas of trapezoids. And yes. students just uh, take notes. I could simplify here too. I uh, there's really not a whole a lot different from seeing the lesson in the video as compared to seeing the lesson uh, in class. But the main advantage is since it's a video, students can go at their own pace. So I always recommend to my students if you, you know, you're watching Three times 14 when, you're, when you see trapezoids. And all of a sudden you realize you kind of spaced out, you didn't understand it, just go back three. and watch it again. So now it's just three. Um, I also, like I said, play pause it allows Here's me to, try on your own. to insert some questions. And then I made these multiple choice, so students will just solve these problems on their own. And then once they have their answer, they'll enter them in here. I'll just take a guess, submit, and it's wrong. So I can go back, and I know I got that wrong, I'll go back and try to figure it out and see if I can find my mistake. And if I get to this part, and I really feel like, man, I have no idea how to solve these, well, it's simple. You just go back, oh, which means those are my bases. look at the so example problem again, really listen carefully, look at your notes, and then that should hopefully be enough to help you figure out your mistakes and solve those questions on your own. With the video lesson complete, it's now time for warm-ups. The beginning of every class starts the exact same way. Students rotate through stations, solving problems and checking their answers to questions related to the previous night's video. After the warm-ups are finished, I now take some time to answer any questions or reteach material that students are still struggling with. We go over all the warm-up problems, I answer any questions from previous classwork or any questions they might have had from the video. The rest of the class is for students to practice what they've learned. Most of the time they're doing problems from the book, but sometimes they might be doing an extension or working on a project. I've been flip teaching now for over three years and so far I really like it. It helps me differentiate by allowing students to study at their own pace. They can pause or rewind the lessons whenever they need to. 
They can re-watch videos if they're preparing for an assessment. If students are ever absent from class, they can still keep up with the rest of the class because the videos are all online. It also frees up time in class for me to reteach or go deeper into the material or work on projects. So far, it has really helped my teaching and I think my students have benefited. I hope this video has helped answer some of your questions and if you ever get a chance to try flip teaching for yourself, I really hope you do. As always, thank you so much for watching and if you like this video, please subscribe.